Hello, it's Regina. Welcome back to my haunted library and welcome to another slow burn Sunday. I hope you're having a lovely Thanksgiving weekend. And if you need a break from all the holiday chaos, I definitely recommend checking out this film. And that's the Mephisto Waltz. This came out in 1971 and it's a stylish occult horror film starring Alan Alda, Jacqueline Bissett and Barbara Parkins. So I remember seeing this film when I was a kid on television, I'm pretty sure. And then I've watched it a couple times since. I just watched it recently on uh, Amazon. I rented it and uh, there might be some other places to watch it online, but it is definitely available. So like I said, this came out in 1971, directed by Paul Wendkos. And um, <clears throat> it also stars Bradford Dillman, who was a very popular actor on television and like those TV movie of the weeks. So I just remember seeing him a lot. And Kurd Jurgens. The name of the movie is taken from the piano work by Franz Litz of the same title. So uh, this was based on a book by a novel by Fred Mustard Stewart. So I don't have the book, although I did buy it on eBay and it should be coming any day, but I wanted to get this video out and I'll, I will read it because I really love the movie. And I do have another book uh, that I'm currently reading just by chance by the same author and that's called Star Child. It has a very cool cover. It's also an occult kind of sci-fi. I started reading this the other night and I, I'm like 50 pages in. It's really, really good and pretty creepy. I have to say pretty creepy. There's a new film that I keep seeing um, advertised on Shutter that I'm going to watch one of these days because it looks really funny as uh, Love Witch. I don't know if any of you guys have seen that. Let me know below if it's worth checking it out. But that is kind of in the same vein or, or like an homage to this type of film. But this is actually very, very stylishly done. They use a lot of wide angle lenses, the clothes, the hairstyles, Barbara Parkins, like uh, lower lashes I, I'm, are to die for. Like it, it's, it's just a gorgeous film. I love the styling of this film. I want to step right into this world. As my other film reviews, there will be spoilers. So just uh, be warned. I'm going to be going through this kind of step by step and taking a look at this fabulous film. So Alan Alda plays a, a music journalist named Miles who goes to interview Duncan Eli, who is a renowned uh, virtuoso pianist. And he is um, in ill health and he lives in this gorgeous mansion. This all takes place in uh, California. He lives in this gorgeous mansion with his stunning daughter, Roxanne, played by Barbara Parkins. Now, Barbara Parkins, as you might remember, plays Anne in The Valley of the Dolls, who is like the good girl, but she's a bad girl in this film, and I really love her as the bad girl. She is also um, in a couple horror movies uh, from that time that I do remember. She didn't have like a huge career. She's in a movie, uh, I think it's an ha old Hammer film that I love from the 70s called Asylum. If you guys have ever seen that, she, she's also in that. Anyway, she's stunning. Jacqueline Bissett is stunning in this movie. And Jacqueline Bissett, Bissett plays Alan Alda's wife. Now she is not liking um, these, this new group of people, but Miles, her husband's very seduced by this new crowd. And they're Satanists, basically. <laughs> I mean, they're the stylish Satanists. I mean, I just, I love this trope. And this film just really hits all those sweet spots for me. If you're into that type of thing, you'll love this film. If you're looking for like a really like scary horror film, you might not like it because it does have like a camp element, which I love. Not everyone does. So I'm just kind of giving you that warning. So Jacqueline Bissett, who is Paula, is not into these people. She especially doesn't like Roxanne. She's getting a really bad vibe from her. Duncan Eli, the virtuoso, when he first meets uh, Miles, notices his hands. He's looking at his hands and he's like, oh, you really have like a, a nice wide span of your fingers or something. So that's when we get the first clue about what's going to happen, if you haven't guessed already. So they go to this fabulous New Year's Eve party where we've got this incredible image of a dog with a man's face. And um, it's very decadent. People start taking off their clothes and doing all kinds of fun things. You know, it's like a 70s, early 70s orgy scene, which is fabulous. And the dog is kind of in the same litter as Damien's dog. So just, it's a, kind of a scary dog. So at the party, Miles is like pulled in with all these people because he's now playing music and they're giving him the love bomb. And Paula, his wife, is kind of seeing through it. 
So Paula starts uh, being very suspicious of these people, especially when the clock strikes midnight and uh, father and daughter kiss in a way that's a little more than just a father-daughter. And she starts becoming very concerned about this scene. But not to be deterred, the Satanists uh, do a ritual in which they transform Duncan's spirit into Miles' body. So then all of a sudden, Miles, who's now Duncan, becomes this virtuoso pianist, and he and Roxanne are, you know, together, and Paula's starting to feel uh, very isolated. Now, the whole time you're thinking, honey, just get in the car and go. They also have a daughter, because I have to admit, this kid actor is kind of annoying. So I wasn't too upset when she also gets uh, the ritual done on her and dies because that's part of the bargain. You know, the Satanists, they always have a bargain. So they have to take uh, her daughter. And of course, Paula is very upset about this. She is trying to uh, get someone to believe her that these people are, you know, really messed up and, and they're killers. So Paula is sounding the alarm bells. No one's listening to her except Bradford Dillman. I just love that name. Um, he is Roxanne's ex-husband, and he and Jacqueline Bissett, Paula, have a little fling, and his house on the beach is really fabulous. The next morning, he's dead. So as part of the ritual, uh, Roxanne, Barbara Parkins' character, does these um, like death masks, plaster death masks, and that's part how they do the transformation. She does one for Miles, and that's how that happens. So uh, Barbara Parkins uh, is off with Miles now, who's really her father. So when Paula is hanging out with Roxanne's ex-husband, Bradford Dillman, he tells her that why they broke up. And it's very chilling. She was pregnant and she miscarried, but, and this is a creepy line, he says the child was a monster because it was actually her father's child. The father-daughter incest theme is, is of course, you know, a, a huge taboo, but it also has a lot of uh, like occult power in these stories. I'm not saying in, in life, <laughs> but in these stories. So, uh, so that was that. So when she wakes up the next morning, Bradford Dillman's dead. The cops don't believe her. She's on her own. This is Paula. She ends up breaking into Roxanne's ma mansion and stealing Roxanne's death mask. And doing the thing with the, uh, the purple fluid on the third eye. She kills herself in the bathtub in a very graphic scene and takes over Roxanne's body. So now when Miles, Alan Alda, comes back from his concert tour, he's Duncan, but um, in a very cool scene and very sexy, Barbara Parkins, who's actually Paula, comes down the stairs and she's wearing this sort of gown but you can tell she's nude underneath and it's a very sensuous film it's very sexy and and very stylish and she starts making out with miles but she's paula so she's kind of getting her husband back at the end and there's this kind of like wild abandoned sexuality that she's releasing at the end because she gets what she wants of course she lost her child but she gets what she wants she gets miles back even though it's not miles it's duncan so it's, there's, there's a sense that Paula goes over to the dark side at the end by joining the occultists. So I really love the Mephisto Waltz. If you're in the mood for some campy occult classic from the early 70s, I would definitely check it well, out. Well, you're not wrong, Regina. I love this movie. And this reminds me, have you tried my new perfume? All you have to do is put a little dab, right? That's okay, Batilda. I'm good. <laughs> okay, that's all we have for today. Thanks for stopping by our haunted library, and we'll see you soon. Bye!